African-American legislators have made so many contributions to the legislature and to the people of the state of Texas. By and large, the African-Americans that have been elected to the Texas legislature have had to go above and beyond the call of duty. They help, uh, I guess you could say, lay the bridge for African-American participation in politics in the state of Texas. Well, I think the role of the African-American legislator has evolved and, and, uh, and changed. No question. Uh, Barbara Jordan uh, was a pioneer. It didn't matter which party you were in. It was the idea she had and what she wanted to accomplish. I think one of the things that I grew up learning is that you have to be involved to make a difference. It's my belief that we're responsible for the world we live in. You cannot correct the system if you're not willing to be part of the system. You can always do more from within. And they arrived in Austin uh, with looking like, you know, some people would call hippies of, of their day. But they had a sense of themselves that, uh, that they were here to do a job that meant change. Race is still an issue. Uh, you can't get away from it. You have to deal with it. Uh, many of the battles that we have fought have been battles that have helped other people, Anglo women and Hispanics, with all due respect, much more than they have helped African Americans. But we've been willing to take on that fight, maybe in part because of the struggle that we went through to get here. All of them tried to do the same thing, and that was make Texas better in a time when people weren't paying that much attention to black folks. African Americans have made significant contributions to the history and culture of Texas. But unfortunately, much of the history of African American life in Texas is disappearing rapidly. Because of the need to preserve this valuable history, the Texas State Legislature established the Texas Institute for the Preservation of History and Culture. Also, that legislation makes this institute the official repository for all of those artifacts in history in Texas. And we thought that was very important to do because we don't think it was being preserved in other places. The Texas Institute for the Preservation of History and Culture was created to preserve records, documents, artifacts, and other items relating to the history and culture of Texas. The Institute, which is located on the Prairie View A&M University campus, 45 minutes northwest of Houston, will reach out to all 254 counties in Texas. The purpose of it was to preserve the um, history and culture uh, of Texas that we thought was not being preserved, that being the contributions of African Americans to this state. Uh, we thought that that's a history that was, that was being lost rapidly, and if we didn't do something to preserve it and make it available for future generations, it would not be long before it would be lost altogether. And there is an African proverb that says that when people lose their history, then they are no more. The Institute encourages the collection of historic materials such as family photos, written documents, books, and oral histories. Sadly, many of these important materials have been discarded or lost forever. The Institute also serves as a conduit to assist historic communities and to help renovate older black neighborhoods and abandoned historic buildings. Texas has been greatly enriched by the contributions of African Americans to business, education, medicine, science, law, and the arts. But some of the most visible and long-lasting contributions of African Americans to Texas have been in politics and government. During the, the 19th century, um, 
especially uh, right after slavery uh, ended in Texas around 1865. Uh, you had many uh, African Americans that got involved in politics because they realized very quickly that politics uh, was the name of the game. You had to get into the policy making end of uh, government in order to make sure that the culture slowly was transformed. In the 19th century, after the Civil War, came Reconstruction, a period when the Union sent federal troops into all the Confederate states to maintain law and order. During this time, many black Texans were elected to and served in the Texas legislature. They were very active in state politics and are credited for creating the public school system in Texas. However, by the beginning of the 20th century, when white Texans returned to political power in the state, laws were passed to discourage black Texans from voting and to prevent them from holding public office. These were called Jim Crow laws. For the next 70 years until the late 1960s, blacks would not hold public office in state government in Texas and were without representation in local and state government. The first black legislators in Texas, and again in the South as well, would occur in the 1870s and 1880s. Uh, interestingly, many people who don't know their history will look at the legislators today and will assume that the 1970s, when people started, when of color started being elected again, was the first time. Well, what they should have said was the first time in 70, 80, or 90 years. For roughly a 20 year period, 1870s to early 1890s, there were black legislators in the Texas House. And so they stripped those that were involved in the war of power. All the white males lost power, couldn't vote, couldn't hold public office. In their stead, uh, they uh, enabled black men, uh, not black women, but black men to have the vote. And so that created some animosities. We should always remember our history in terms of the African Americans that have served uh, in this body uh, since uh, Reconstruction. When you begin to think about uh, the contributions that they made as it relates to the creation of the public school system, we need to recognize that uh, uh, they were involved in that process and weighed heavily in terms of the legislature's uh, decision and the governor's decision back then to create the public school system, free public school system in the state. And when the Confederates left the Union, they had some kind of rule that they could not hold those offices. A number of blacks got those offices in Texas, became elected officials. And during that time frame of the 19th century, uh, blacks primarily belonged to the Republican Party because they were the party of Lincoln. If we're talking from a historical perspective, you have to also know that for minorities and for blacks that we, uh, we were underserved or not educated for, we were enslaved people for 310 years. And so when we came out of slavery, uh, we were not given uh, a pass to the universities or to the schools. You're free, but you're not an educated. So three years that you have to catch up with the, uh, your counterparts. And so when you're standing there in the middle of the field is the way I, I do my presentation when I say this, that you're standing in the middle of the field in Gavison, Texas, and someone says to you, you are free and you don't know anything but what you've been doing as an enslaved person, then how free are you? The concept of freedom was not even there. Once the Reconstruction period ended, and I'm sure you're familiar with when Reconstruction ended, it ended when the occupation of the South by federal troops ended. When the federal troops left, um, then things sort of went back to business as usual, and that began the era of Jim Crow in the South. And from that time, around the end of the 19th century, up until the mid-60s, there were not any African-American legislators in the Texas legislature.